Hi guys, my name is Ozzy, and today I'm going to be doing a review on the third episode of Black Lightning. This episode is called Luanda, the Book of Burial. And basically, it follows up in the last scenes of last week's episode. They're having the burial service for Luanda. And basically, the Reverend is motivating people to stand up. He wants to have 100 people to join with him as he marches against the 100 so they can basically reclaim the streets, which in itself is very dangerous because they're making everybody in the march that's protesting a target for the 100 again. Cause you know you should if you already have like a crazy notorious gang that kills people in broad daylight, what makes you think they won't kill you at nighttime? So you know it's, it's pretty reckless. But basically, he's just saying that we gotta reclaim the streets. We can't have like them pushing us around, which in theory sounds good. But peaceful protest only works for people that are willing to negotiate. And as the Hunter Gang has showed in previous episodes, they play by their own rules. They're not about to play by other people's rules. And basically, Henderson the the investigator, the detective that he's, he talks to um, Jefferson, he basically says that this is reckless and this is wild, that they shouldn't do this. And the Reverend is saying that a lot of my people retire. We're either getting killed by the 100 or getting or we're killing ourselves. And he's right. And th that's the whole that's the whole bad part about this whole protest thing. Like, they're, they're, they're damned if they do and they're damned if they don't. So they have to fight out. If they just stand there, they're going to die. If they protest, more people will die. But at least they're fighting and not just going out like that. So basically, Henderson is basically saying that, oh, Black Lightning is an inspiration, but the Reverend believes opposite. He's saying that if it wasn't for Black Lightning, LaWanda wouldn't have had hope to go even look for her daughter. She would have just been paralyzed in fear, which is half true. So, like, Black Lightning, he's not at fault for her death because she did not take the advice of Jefferson who told her she's just given 48 hours. But anyway, that still triggered him to, like, to go out there and be Black Lightning again. So I guess... It's a double-sided sword, like, good happens and bad happens, so, yeah, but basically, the Reverend is, is just talking, he's arguing with Henderson, saying that things can be made right again if they just protest, and the investigator's just like, nah, it's not gonna work out like that, and, like, as we see later in the episode, he's halfway right, so basically, on the other side of the episode, Anissa, she's basically trained in trying to figure out how to use her destiny power, she's in a junkyard, which is very reminiscent of Static Shock, in the beginning episode when he first gets his powers and he's testing out his electromagnet his electromagnetism. Dang it, hold on, I got the electromagnetism powers. I don't know why I, I stumbled my words like that. But yeah, that was basically like a whole reference to Static Shock, which is pretty cool. If they integrate Static Shock into this TV series, that would be amazing. And then if he gets his own spin-off series, that would be even better. But anyway, that's that's another, you know, Static Shock fanboy over here. Been watching since back in the day when I was a wee kid. But anywho, and this is she's testing out her powers. At first you can't figure out what triggers her power so she just starts kicking all the random stuff in the junkyard and then she hurts her leg or yeah she hurts her leg she kicks it and then she just she just winces her leg like ah my leg ah so basically that's when she realizes she just she's just gonna use her martial arts training and then she just keep punching and kicking at all the objects in the junkyard until eventually she hits it hard enough and then it triggers her density power she sends the object in the junkyard flying straight forward and that's when she's like yeah I'm feeling like I'm feeling like the woman right now and Basically, later in the story, she goes out to the library. She's researching, like, genetic mutation. And then this uh, librarian that works there, her name is Grace. She sees her and says, what are you looking at it for? She said, you know someone that's sick? And she said, I hope not. And then they basically just talk, start talking about superheroes because uh, Anissa notices that there's a, a comic book in her back pocket, which, surprisingly enough, they're making another little uh, Easter egg here. She has an uh, Outsiders comic book in her back pocket. Which is basically these outcast heroes that they have powers that basically like make them look unhuman. So like Metamorpho, Katana, and this one guy, I, I forgot what his other power was. But I can't remember the third character that was in, Meta, in uh, the outsides. But you guys can look that up for yourself and go ahead and comment if you know what it is. So basically, I, I feel like Grace might play Katana. But that would be weird though because they're making a reference to DC Comics but they're in the DC Universe. So I, I don't know how that would work. But it was still cool to see nonetheless. And basically, there's like some like slight flirtation going on between Anissa and Grace, so it's pretty interesting. I wonder. I, I feel like, like I, I was right. I felt like her, Anissa's girlfriend that she was dating at the time, they were gonna break up, and they end up breaking up because they're. I, she ends up inviting Grace. Ends up inviting Anissa to like this party, this Halloween party. I don't know, not a Halloween party. It's just like a costume party. And she goes, and then her girlfriend just sees her there. She's like, "Oh, you're dancing with other girls." Oh, you were, what she, what she called, she said you're a costume hoe or something like that. No, she said, this is what she said. She said, uh, 
oh, Miss Black Lives Matter is out here dancing with with uh with Asian women now or something like that. I was just like, wow, that's, that was actually pretty recent and insensitive. I was just like, wow. I was like, I'm glad that they're not together anymore because honestly, if I wanted to be dating somebody that's just gonna be snap on you just like that, she jealous and just dancing. It was kind of flirtatious though. I ain't gonna hold you. If I see my girl dance with another person like that, I I, I be I be in my feelings a little. I'd be like, whoa, what's going on? He didn't even tell me he was going. He was he was going. I see how to find you. That's tough. But anywho, basically they end up breaking up, and then Grace comforts her and says that if she treats you like that, she's probably not the one for you anyway. And I agree. I I feel like the relationship wasn't gonna go anywhere because uh, I forgot this is girlfriend. And to me, it's not even important because I felt like she wasn't even gonna last long in the series anyway because she was she herself saying that oh Anissa you you have so much going on that you won't have time for me yada yada yada, which is basically saying Anissa you're too good. I know what that's like. When you're the better person in the relationship, that's just what happens. Not trying to be cocky, but I can relate. And anywho, so the episode goes forward. Uh, Jefferson is basically training with uh, Peter. Peter d redesigns his his, uh, his gauntlets for his suit so that we can redirect electricity in a way where he can aim at one person and not hit everybody in this blast radius. Because Jefferson, since he's been retired for nine years, He's not as great as controlling his powers as he used to be, so he uses a holographic simulation. And at first, he's, he's aiming just to hit the police officers that might get in the way, that might hurt the citizens. And he basically just hits all the citizens while he's training. But eventually, he gets the hang of it, and then he's only able to hit the police officers who he's training. He, he crosses his arms like this, and, and then he just shoots them, and then he looks at Peter, and they're both like, again. And I was like, that was funny. You see, like, the little dynamic that they're having between uh, Peter and Jefferson, like, the whole mentorship dynamic is really cool. It's good to see. And yeah, so moving on to the episode, uh, Jennifer is basically talking to her boyfriend Khalil, and they're basically like having plans of like, oh yeah, let's have sex this weekend. And it's really interesting because like Khalil is basically a nice guy, and he admits to uh, Jennifer that he's actually a virgin, and she said, oh my gosh, that's great because I'm a virgin too. And so she said, now she likes him even more because he didn't lie about it, and even he he would risk not having sex with her just to tell the truth. So she realized how good of a guy she is he is so then moving forward they, there's a part in the episode where like they're having dinner and that's when uh, that's when Anissa is at that party with Grace and Jennifer's all upset because she's like wow Jennifer was supposed to be here I was trying to give you guys this news she's, and she basically just says I'm gonna have sex I'm gonna have sex tomorrow and, the, and her parents are just like <clears throat> they basically almost spit out the drinks and just start sipping the wine slowly and then uh, Lynn she's actually while they're both surprised and thrown off by this revelation of news that they're getting at this moment in time, they're basically like, we're glad that you came to us because most people, if they're having sex, they're never going to tell their parents. Most teenagers, if they're having sex, they're, they're sneaking out the house. They're, they're planning when their parents are home at work. You know how it'd be. So basically, they're, just, they're happy that they told them, but they don't know how to proceed. So they, bo they both, Jefferson and Lynn both choke up. And she basically says, I'm planning to do it this Saturday. And I'm just like, well, that's so funny because no one has ever like, when people have sex, they don't ever, like, plan it down to the last detail. She said, I'm going to have sex this weekend on Saturday. Oh, but don't worry, I'm going to be back before my curfew. But, like, it was so respectful, but, like, it was just, like, so weird because no parent wants to hear that their daughter that's, like, 17, or is she 17? Yeah, and their daughter that's 17 is about to just go have sex because to them, in their in their mind, that's still their little girl, so. And then they basically, Jefferson and Lynn have a talk about it in his principal's office the next day. They're like, I froze up. She said, usually you're the one that is cool-headed. And she said, I'll talk to the, talk to her. But anyway, Anissa and and, Je and Jennifer, they end up having a conversation when Anissa gets home. They have, like, this whole thing, like, how come you haven't been around the house lately? And she's basically saying that she's tired of protesting. But she agrees to go with Jennifer to protest with the uh, reverend and the church members, even though it's dangerous. But she just says that I'll be there to support you, even though, like, I'm tired of marching, which is good. And then... Jennifer just proceeds to tell her about birth control, but they don't go too much into details because, you know, they're not about to, like, go out here and give, like, a whole lecture. They're making, like, everything all natural, which is good. So I like the progression that the show is going into. And then later, Tobias Will, like, we see his face, and we realize that he's not the big boss. Like, uh, hey, what's her name? Jill Scott, she's playing the, the, the bigger boss, Lady Eve, and she owns, like, the funeral parlor who connects with uh, Tobias Will. And basically, what she does is, like, she takes care of all the dead bodies that that uh, Tobias and the 100 gang are piling up. And she's just, like, basically making the bodies disappear and, like, make them untraceable, which is my guess here, since she owns the funeral. And he pays her the money. She said this should cover 
uh, Lala's mistakes, like all the bodies, all the death that he brought upon in the gang, and then himself. And he's and then she basically says, "You realize that even though Lala's you you giving the money is not going to stop Black Lightning." And the bias is still in the night. He's like, "Black Lightning is dead. I killed him with my own bare hands." And he's all mad and stuff. But then Lady Eva's like. Even I don't care what people believe in, but when they start believing that they can cross over with my business, that's when I realized that Lady Eve is the bigger boss. And honestly, she's a lot scarier than to uh, Tobias Will. Because you ever seen an angry black woman that has power? You don't want to see an angry black woman, right? That's just not something that you want to do ever in life. So basically, they go on to later in... Oh, wait, I, I skipped a, a big a big moment. So there was a big moment with Tobias Will, one of the people that he's hiring to go and shoot up the uh, protest. He's basically saying that you have to go and make some examples out of these people. We can't have them thinking that they can uh, they can just do anything and cause an uprising and protest against the 100 because the 100, they got to be like the supreme gang and show people that they run these streets. But he says, don't kill the reverend because if you kill the reverend, you create a martyr. And a martyr is basically like when someone dies for the cause for the cause of something, it makes the cause a lot stronger. Like when Martin Luther King was assassinated, it made the civil rights movements that more that much more impactful. So he basically said, just shoot random people in the crowd, but not the reverend. So he stabs the shooter in the hand and says, don't be afraid. And then he, in the most coldest way, he says, now stop bleeding on my desk. I was like, what? He acted up. How you going to stab this man in the hand and tell him, stop bleeding on my desk? Like, you're not the one that just stabbed. That's when I realized, the vile world is some other type of mania. I was like, whoa, I had to get the drink. I was like, don't do it, don't do it. But he went and did it. And he said, and then the dude... He made the shooter pull the knife out of his own hand. Like, the levels of savagery that you got to be as a crime boss to do this type of stuff, that, to me, that was just crazy. And so basically, at the protest, uh, Jefferson realized that his daughters and Lynn are there, his ex-wife and his daughters are there, and he's like, oh my gosh, Like now he's even more afraid because the threat of the shooter is very real. So basically, uh, Peter suggests that instead of being like, on a high roof point, which would be very obvious. He's probably just going to pull up around in the crowd. And then, basically, Black Lightning, a.k.a. Jefferson, he realized, he noticed some movement, and then he sees the shooter, and then he just creates, like, a, a electric force field to protect the whole crowd of protesters against the bullets. And this part is amazing, because I'm just like, bro, how long can you hold this field? And he basically holds the field until, like, the shooter runs out of bullets. And as he goes to reload, he does the little practicing single strike, and he hits the shooter. And then he knows another shooter, and then he, he hits him with electric, electricity, too. And I was like, oh, this is lit. Like, the thing I love about Black Lightning series so far is that when they do the fight scenes, it's not over the top, and it's not extra. It's just, like, straight to the point, and it works. So basically, like, all the people in the crowd, they're all applauding Black Lightning for saving him. So, oh, my gosh, Black Lightning, you're the best, you're the greatest. And then Lynn looks at Black Lightning, and they look at him. But I guess... They can't really see his face. Like, in my eyes and in the audience's eyes, it's just like, this is so obvious that Jefferson Pierce is Black Lightning. But as they've explained in previous episodes, his suit is so bright that when people are around him, it's hard for them to see his face. So I guess it's good that they have an explanation. Like, the whole, like, like most people, they'd be like, oh, Superman is Clark Kent. All he did was take off his last, like, the audience knows, but the people don't know. It's just obvious, it's just more obvious to us because we know what's going on behind the scenes. So psychologically, it just looks obvious. But anywho... While this is all happening and Black Light, he has his back turned. This is what I thought was so stupid. I'm like, bro, you've been a superhero before you retired. You knew that if you're protecting somebody, how in your right mind would you turn your back? That's my only problem with this whole episode. But I guess this is I guess this is what happens. Because Tobias Will, he's basically driving by with his uh with his bodyguard, and then he's like, Oh my god, he said he's alive? How impossible? And then he's just getting all into a rant. And then that's when he realized he said, you know what? He tells uh his shooter to shoot Black Lightning. But the shooter, I don't know if she does this on purpose, but she misses, and she hits uh, the Reverend instead. And the Reverend, he's basically, he gets shot, and he apparently the Reverend doesn't die. Like, he goes to the hospital, but in the, in the process, Khalil, Jennifer's boyfriend, he gets hit too in his spine. So they're both rushed to the hospital. I guess the bullet ricocheted and hit him, and I was like, whoa, what the heck is going on? And then, of course, at the end, Jennifer is, like, in the hospital. She's all sad and... Lonely, laughing. well, she's not lonely. Anissa is there to comfort her, and she asks her, will he be okay? And Anissa, being a real one, she doesn't lie, and says, of course it's going to be great. She says, I don't know. she just says, I don't know. But she holds her sister close, and it's like a strong moment where you see, like, the sisters, they're, like, really close. They're, like, that's a strong family. And the mother and father are there, too, but they're, like, more so in the background worried about the reverend. And then it's crazy, like, basically, then Jennifer is just giving the news that he got that Khalil got hit in the spine, so he might never be able to run again, which is really depressing because uh, 
Jennifer, like Khalil's whole purpose of like of doing well in school, like he's like an honor roll student getting great grades. He was just trying to get a track scholarship so that way he can get himself out of the hood and and like make his parents proud, and basically just wrong all the wrongs that his father did as a as a drug dealer or a drug user that the, he talked about in the previous episode. It's just like really sad too. And then yeah, so Tobias will basically just like he he just he just he's, just, he's still sends a powerful message that. I'm out here in these streets, and no one's just about to just, like, cross me like that. So, I hopefully, in future episodes, they don't protest again like they learned from this. But the whole episode is called The Burial, Lawanda, The Book of Burial, so. And the next episode is called Black Jesus, so I guess we're going to see Jefferson Pierce do, like, a lot of important things in the community to, like, hold it down while the Reverend is, like, out of commission. So, we'll see how this goes. I feel like there's going to be a lot of church scenes in the next episode. And uh, there's another thing I forgot to mention, but, like, during that one scene where, like, Jefferson is talking to Khalil about not having sex with his daughter, like, he described, he asked him how to take a shower. He said, oh, so you wash your feet before you wash your private area? And then he's like, no. He said, the correct answer should be no. He said, you better slow down with my daughter. I was just like, that has to be the most father thing to do. I'm not going to lie. If I found the dude that was planning on having sex with my daughter, I was trying to intimidate him, too, only because that's your daughter. You know, you're going to protect him. Most people are like... Oh, no, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't let her have freedom. Let's be real. If you're a father, especially a black father, you know how, like, dudes work. And you, you would assume that most men are just want your daughter for one thing, so you just don't want your daughter being, like, taken advantage of. But that's just a little side note there. So, hopefully, for the next episode, uh, Lynn and Jefferson, if they don't get closer, I don't really care. I just want Jefferson to realize his priorities and just go ahead and be black lightning to the best of his ability, do more training. Hopefully, his daughter talks to him about the powers or don't run into each other. And you'll see her having the powers. And I feel like Grace is going to be a more prominent character. So I feel like that's probably going to be uh, Anissa's next girlfriend. So we'll find out in the next episode. Or hopefully maybe episode 5. Who knows. But go ahead and comment below what your favorite part about episode 3 was. And I know this, episode, this review is very late. It's Thursday and this episode came out on Tuesday. But bear with me. I have classes on Tuesday night. So like when my class ends, the episode starts. And my DVR is out of service right now, so I'm literally watching it, like, three, like on CW TV, like, when it, like, airs, so I can watch, like, the past episodes. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed this review, and I'm out. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There was this one scene, like, uh, when they were marching, they were wearing foam, there was this one dude wearing foam pot. I was like, that's tough, because, you know, I'm from the DMV, you know, I got, when I see sneakers in a TV show, I love to see that. So, dude had a foam pot, I'm going to just put the picture right here. And, anywho, I seen the foam pot, I was like, wow, that's a real dude right there. I was like... I was like, man, if I had known any better, I would think that Freeland takes place in the DMV area. But that's a that's another theory for another episode. But yeah, basically, hope you guys enjoyed this review. Leave a comment below. Share it with your friends. Get more people to watch Black Light. I'm going to leave a link in the description below. If you haven't seen the episode, you want to check out the series, like you can check it out on CWTV.com. Again, link in the comment section will be pinned, and it will also be in the description. And I'm out. Peace. Angels keep on saying, stop procrastinating. Put